one, I guess the biggest story from last week, and I, I actually need some filling in the blanks on this because I don't know the full details, but um, Mick Gordon came out to talk about um, do the Doom Eternal OST controversy and basically right. explained uh, that uh, essentially he would they try he was they attempted to pay him off to not uh, expose what happened. Um, so they attempted to significantly pay him off too, like not not peanuts, like real shut the fuck up money. So what originally happened with the OST? The original the original description, as I remember it, was that Mick Gordon took too long to do the OST and thus could not finish the mastering process in time and thus somebody else had to come in and fix it and it was mick gordon's fault that there were mixing issues tried to Hooray. blame it on him at wow. the time okay thank you darling <laughs> and the ish and then the ost that did come out sounded like shit uh compared to the in-game music right yes i believe that is also what happened it was a mixing difficulty. Okay. So, um, yeah, long, uh, 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 confusing stuff happened, and I guess there were Reddit posts back and forth and things, but... Um, yeah, and then as a result, he wasn't on the DLC. The, right, right, right. Yes, okay. Um, now, Mick has fucking composed some, like, unbelievable shit throughout. I mean, he's go a good listen music to, man. Literally, go listen to that. Go listen to Killer Instinct. Like, dude's incredible. Um, but uh, the the account that, that he, he came out, basically came out and said, uh, Marty, so I guess one of the it execs, uh, lied. Marty would uh, be the creative, like the head of, of it. Okay. Working on, on uh, Marty O'Donnell, I think his name is. About the circumstances surrounding Doom Eternal soundtrack, used disinformation and innuendo to blame me entirely for its failure. Um, he, I guess, yeah, so Marty made a Reddit post uh, where he was making these claims, and it says it severely impacted both his professional and personal reputation. Um, and he gives a long and detailed account uh, of how he was forced to... Uh, Sorry, people are correcting me. It's Marty Stratton. Stratton. Um, yeah, unrealistic deadlines, unclear vision. He was asked to produce two finished scores per month. Um, details... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, and and uh, uh, details on the level themes, the boss fights, and any dev sound cues were unavailable when he started working, so he had to work blind without any of that information. From, from two years away uh, from the release, he the schedule demanded that he produce a steady stream of final music immediately. Um, and obviously the fact that there, it had to closely match gameplay, but he didn't have any of that because the levels were still months away from being designed didn't make any sense. Yeah, you would need a gray box level to fucking actually do that. Um, and so, yeah, like, difficulties emerged early on when he couldn't provide those in a timely manner. And then, um, yeah, it just goes on to expose that, like, this, the entire defense that they ran... Uh, or that Marty ran for why that that whole OST fucked up um, when it was uh, eventually released was uh, bullshit, and that they tried to pay him off with six-digit figures to essentially significant payoff. Stay quiet and take the blame. Um, I've been I've been offered five to twenty bucks to shut the fuck up by like a family member. And I snitched on him anyway, but like, oh, a hundred grand, one hundred and twenty grand, or whatever. Man, that's that, that's shut the fuck up money. Uh, 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 trailer park boys, just full on. I'm gonna give you this hundred dollars to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it took a while. Obviously, that was a couple years ago before it gets to this point, but, um. It says he also went like close to a year without getting paid. Um, Good, excellent. As well, so, uh, yeah, this this whole thing uh, looks real shit on its part here, um, and you know that sucks when um, like why would someone, especially like you're you're a Mick Gordon, when you come into a project and you're brought in to do uh, anything, like the game is lucky to have you. You're one yeah. of the best composers you are a, in the You industry. are a legitimate value add 
put it on the box kind right of thing. but now we're gonna pay you to look worse and look like you fucked up and look like you can't deliver despite asking impossible things and then other companies that are going to want to hire you for their games have to look at this story and buy it you know and hire you with the caveats that oh well there was that time that he botched on doom you know yeah even if he never gets a dime from this and never gets any formal restitution putting it out there so that he can clear the air before going to other projects is a valuable endeavor for him when you're a gun for hire you have to do that like your your reputation is your fucking ability to get work you know um, if you was an id employee and, and, you know, just was like, whatever happens, he's the guy. Like, that's one thing, but it's not the case. I mean, yeah. So, anyway, um, there's a big old Medium post about it, but, um, and, and, and it, 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 it goes on, but that's just a fucking, that is a, a shit-ass conclusion to something that is, you know, a really talented person working on a game that fucking was awesome. And, like, clearly when you see the results of like that where it's like it's a perfect fit you know like it sucks that you have this type of bullshit involved because um i think he also kind of indicated somewhere that like he still has love for doom as a franchise and you know what i mean like is it's it, it really is up his alley in terms of like nailing it with that uh, uh both games and their osts but um uh this is some more shit right, and right, it was incredible. kudos yeah kudos uh kudos to him for for you know saying was telling it like it is so so I'm, that answers I'm, I'm, any so, questions i suppose you know well i've been thinking about this a while and i think i've discovered the new hot, my hot tips on how to buy video games uh what you need to do is if you see a video game that you think you're going to want to buy you need to uh ignore everything about it and then buy it uh, uh pre-order it on like steam or something uh as soon as possible and then when the game comes in, day one, you have to play it for two and a half hours. Don't look at the internet. Don't look at it. And then, <laughs> then it'll be too late to refund it once it comes out that the game was made with orphan bones. Right, 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 right. And, and, right. and people are like, how could you be playing? It's like, oh, I already bought it before I found out. Well, okay. Yeah. In, in, in Mick's case, though, alongside this, he did also come out and say... Hey, please don't review bomb the game because of this. Please mm -hmm. don't like uh, hurt what a number of like talented devs and people who work on this that still care about it that are good people made um, because of one shitty dude's lies. You know, so um, well, that's nice of him. Yeah, uh, he did not make an appeal to the Slayer Nutters. <laughs> Attention, Slayer Nutters. I hate it, dude. <laughs> he didn't call for anything. He said, hey, uh, the game is still made by some good people. This guy sucks. 